Aloha and welcome to another episode of Hawaii Farmer Series. We're here every Thursday from 4 to 5 on ThinkTech talking with farmers as well as all the other folks that make up our local food system. We like to hear their background story, learn why they love what they do, and see what's in the future for local food in Hawaii. I'm your co-host, Justine Espiritu. This is my lovely co-host, Matthew Johnson. Thank you, Justine. And also to remember, for uh, if you want to join the show, you can tweet in by tweeting at, at ThinkTechHI. And you can also check us out on YouTube at ThinkTechHI. So uh, as always, we have another excellent show ready for you. <laughs> We're going to be talking about farm to school. So how to get more locally produced food into our schools for the keiki. So with us, we have two of the state's experts talking about their experience and their passion on how they do it. So please welcome uh, Robin Fall, who's with the State Department of Agriculture. And we also have Lighty Morgan Bernal. Uh, I, you keep bouncing around. I know you've been with, um, well, you'll just tell us who you've been with <laughs> and give some more background before I butcher it. <laughs> so with that, uh, how about you go ahead and Lighty, give us a little more background on yourself and talk to us about how did you get to become so involved with Farm to School? Okay, great. Thank you, Matt and Justine. So um, I started actually with Kokua Hawaii Foundation as a school garden educator. And it was the first time I really had ever worked in the garden and worked with children. But put, somehow putting the two t together was just um, where the love is. And I just fell in love immediately with that experience. Um, so I. I worked with Kokua Hawaii Foundation's Aina in Schools program, and um, it's a farm to school program that teaches nutrition, gardening, and composting to elementary school uh, school students on Oahu, and actually um, trainings now around the state with the curriculum. And I became their school garden coordinator, teaching volunteers how to teach the lessons. Um, during that experience, we started gathering with members of the farm to school community around the islands. Um, and in 2010, we formed a statewide hui, the F Hawaii Farm to School and School Garden hui. Mm -hmm. And in 2014, we decided we needed a coordinator of that group, and um, that became me. Um, and it's been really exciting to see how much we've been able to accomplish together. Cool. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah, so many different things to talk about in there. Yeah. Um, Robin, why don't you go ahead and give us a little background on yourself? Ooh, from what direction? Uh, how you became the state coordinator for Department okay. of Agriculture and your background that led you up to that? Can do. Um, so my background's pretty varied, um, but I, I was asked to uh, to apply for for the position in the Department of Agriculture when it finally got passed through the great work of the Hui. Um, so my position is brand new. It just came out last year um, with Act 218. And it outlines, it creates and outlines a statewide farm to school program for the state, um, which is different than what we already had going on in a lot of different parts in our right. community. So I've worked with um, the farm to school programs on a number of different levels um, from my own kids and uh, volunteering in the garden with Ina Is and taking their docent training, which was great at my Keiki school. And then um, at law school, I focused on bridging um, government contracts and public policy work and environmental law and cultural rights together. Um, so that culminated into actually my law thesis that was um, based on farm to school. How can we leverage public policy and work with the laws that we have and implement um, other strategies to create power to the people of what we want to see. And this became a passion of mine to work with the stakeholders and kind of identify what the laws were or the regulations or just the internal policies that were creating sticking points when we had some really great ideas like, hey, let's give our kids some, some fresh natural food that's grown locally or in our garden. What is implementing um, programs look like and what is what needs to happen so spend a lot of other time I don't know how far you want me to go into it but um, good that's a good start. <laughs> is that is that yeah. enough to go yeah. off of you know there's 
there, it's hard. It's difficult because there's so many different things involved with farm to school, um, and there's so many different directions this conversation could take. But you're the host, so tell us where you want to go. Uh, okay, <laughs> great. I, I will tell you where uh, I where want this to go. This? So uh, one thing, like my my first, you know, obviously for a lot of the viewers, and I know for myself too, when you're talking about good healthy food getting into schools, it just seems like an inherent thing that should just automatically happen. So. Mm -hmm. Lottie, you've been working at this for a really long time, and and explain why 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 isn't this just obviously and easily happening? Mm, good question. I might let you get a little more detailed on that, but I want to um, make sure people understand what Farm to School is. Um, we do have a national Farm to School network, and they have defined Farm to School as procurement. So that's everything: school food, school gardens, and education. Mm -hmm. So. In a lot of ways, we um, put the education and school gardens together because we really see school gardens as a key component, and the whole Farm to School network uh, and movement would agree that school gardens are really a key component of having kids understand where their food comes from and why it's important. And most importantly, I think, too, is actually getting to taste what fresh food tastes like mm -hmm. and experience you know, the seed to table. Um, and being a part of that. So, um, in terms of the school food component, if you want to pick up on that. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> thanks. There's a there's a number of things um, that are going into play, and actually, I, I want to just highlight that there have been um, programs implemented. Um, we have some great folks in our state that are doing things um, for, through the DOE. Um, working with charter schools, working with private schools, and the who is even giving out information for, um, for home schools. So we're talking about how to get this idea of eating healthier, locally grown food, which are two, one in the same a lot of times when we talk about it, into, um, into our schools in a way that the kids will eat it. And that's a, that's a whole other story. But the programs that we've been working with so far, um, we, we have in our state, um, if we're looking just at DOE, we have a school food authority that's central to all the, the state schools. Charter schools can be their own school food authority, which means that they're the ones that are buying the food. Right. They're the ones that are making the contracts and organizing um, the delivery of all the food stock to go into producing the menus. Mm. That all has to be in compliant with federal programs. Mm. Now, um, that comes down through the National School Lunch Program. And then there's a couple other programs that we access too, like fresh fruits and vegetables. And we have a great group that's called Hawaii Child Nutrition Program um, that's funded through USDA, housed in the DOE for our state. And they work very closely with experimenting with local foods um, and different types of exotic foods and getting kids to try it. Because it's one thing to say, this is healthy, we want you to eat it. Look, right. we spent more money for it because it's important to us. It's a it's the other aspect, and that's where the gardens play such a critical role, is to that experiential factor of having the kids take part in it, learn from it, take ownership of it, and get excited about it. Mm. Um, how to get a kid to eat a tomato is always very challenging <laughs> if you're a parent, right? And I have my moments, too, where I'll just, I'll just cave and give them something that they'll eat. But, um, when we're setting policies forth, we want to make sure that they comply with our nutritional guidelines um, so we can access all this great federal funding and these very comprehensive um, federal programs that give us our free and reduced school lunches. And taking it a little step further on that note, um, you know, when we're talking about increasing the, the health of our keiki in Hawaii and we're looking at our populations, um, a lot of times, school food lunches and breakfasts are the only nutritious meal that our kids have access to. And so if we lose out on all these procurement issues of getting the right nutrition and getting the menu balanced and the right portions, we put that funding in jeopardy. So it's important for our programs to integrate all this in a way that the kids will eat it um, and we procure it in a way that keeps all the guidelines in straight so we can get access to this funding that's really critical 
for um, ensuring that the health of, of our keiki on the islands, um, whenever, whenever schools do um, mess up and um, they get into procurement violations and they lose their funding, it's very sad. Mm. Um, and luckily, we have other nonprofits that step up and um, find creative ways to get some food to our kids. Um, but that's a little scary, especially from a statewide perspective, when we're looking at how do we change things on a systematic level, which is kind of what I'm doing now. What Lighty and the, and the HUI's been doing, the Kohala Center, um, uh, Kukua Foundation, Hawaii, Hawaii, Kukua, Kukua Foundation. Foundation. That one, <laughs> that awesome one that does the Aina Is programs, um, Malama Kauai, there's all these different groups in the HUI these groups have sprung up from our communities. Mm -hmm. They've, they're addressing needs. So, for instance, in Kauai, where they've lost um, some of their federal funding for their schools, and they can't access that federal funding, there are some great folks who are stepping up and just trying to get local food delivered to kids. Um, it's not part of an official school program, but it's something to help the underlying efforts of one, be resourceful, two, we have food growing here, three, you can do it too, yeah. and four, it's healthy. It's, um, we see if kids choose healthier snacks, if they choose fresh fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. instead of the processed packaged um, items that, that we so often today go to. Um, there, it's lower glycemic index, lower saturated fat. There's all these health benefits that we're looking at. But bottom line, it's common sense too. So, um, you know, it's it's been awesome to see everything's popping up as it needs to, and seeing how we can all network together um, to to make systematic changes. Yeah, I think when we're, we're talking about systematic change, it, it takes a lot of knowledge of that system and, and these different groups that kind of pop up and these different roles of kind of being the expert in that area, I think it really takes collaboration and combining your, your knowledge and resources to make these large scale changes versus popping up. So we're gonna take a quick break and get a little more in depth into it. Thanks. Why? Aloha, welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Josh Green. I'm a senator from the Big Island and a physician. I host a show weekly called Healthcare in Hawaii, where we talk about the most important issues in healthcare for our state, whether it's the dengue fever outbreak, the state of our public hospitals, how to find physicians and nurses for our patients, or really just the best things to do for our family's health. That's what you'll find on this show. I'll bring experts to your attention, and we'll have a free-flowing dialogue. Thanks for joining us. Aloha, namaskar, and hello. My name is Anu Hittel, and I host the show called Climate Change Beyond Outrage. We go beyond outrage to find solutions to climate problems facing people, nations, and the world. I hope you will join me here every Tuesday at 1 o'clock. We broadcast live from thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha and bye-bye. Aloha, and we're back to Hawaii Farmer Series. I am your co-host, Matt Johnson, with Justine Espiritu. And I'm not going to talk for too long because we have so much to talk about with our guests today. I'm talking about food to school here with Robin and Lighty. Thanks again for being here with us. And we're just kind of picking up where we left off. And Robin, I don't know, is now a good time to kind of show off maybe the prop you brought with us? Oh yeah, I brought pro I brought presents. <laughs> this is, I think, the first this time the uh, first time that has happened. <laughs> so we this have actual props. I was actually very excited that I get to use this. So um, let me show you guys what I got here. This of. is something that um, that I created when I was defending my my law thesis. Um, that was written on farm to school programs and how to leverage public policy in local lunch. And it ties it all together. You know, in law school, um, I had some, some great professors who really stood up and they understood the environmental, the Native Hawaiian, the economic and the health impacts of it. But um, when you start dealing with policy and things like this, it gets pretty unwieldy. Yeah. But it comes down to making these choices, you know, what type of food are we going to eat? Like the regular food where we see unhealthy keiki or a ba more balanced menu where they can be healthy. And 
So here you have like the two menus, like the, the unhealthy, two menus, yep. unhealthy version is canned peaches, canned, just a lot of canned processed chili hot dog white Which is roll. easy to buy and seriously, our DOE has no storage facilities, so mm. it's better for preservation, but yeah. if you go the other side. And then on the healthy side, we have like organic milk, fresh fruit, poi, fresh garden salad, whole wheat toast, ooh, lean meat. Lean meat, yeah, and all those, those complex, um, Wow. numbers that come down and there are you know our federal programs do evaluate this and they look at it so when I started explaining um, what I was trying to talk about to my law professors they said no there's so many different players involved can you focus just on one thing mm. but they're so integrated right. and there's so many players that my, my children have you, you been brought, so helpful. You I brought, brought you the puppets. Here. Oh, wow. <laughs> These are many of the players. Do that we need mics for them? I, I think no, right. I think they're good. <laughs> um, but there's so many different players at each step of, of, the, um, of the pipeline when we're talking about implementing these programs, which is why it's so important to keep them at least in mind. You know, logistically, I, I spent a couple years up at the ledge and it's amazing where we have these really great ideas um, from, our, from our representatives that can't be implemented because we don't have the resources at the state level to implement it. And then we have nonprofits and we have HUIs that have joined up, like with Lighty's group. Um, and they are critical support for facilitating all of this communication. But you have to be realistic when you're... When you're um, trying to implement something different. Right. And when you're talking about realistic, just when you, you had that up there and talking about what we have available in school lunches, uh, canned and things that are kind of preserved, this idea that systems, they want to work efficiently. And you know, when we're trying to do something like implement something that's a little more complicated, like a full balanced meal, especially if this is their only meal, I think you have to learn where you can um, where efficiency isn't the number one priority, but how can we make the right thing the efficient thing? Yeah, and it's, you're, you're absolutely right. So, it, and I have an agricultural business management background. Um, so from an ag business perspective, right? And you're talking about procuring food for all the DOE schools, which is right. the, I mean, we're across so many different islands geographically, we're separated. We're looking at innovative ways to do that. The difficulty in that is that it takes a lot of management. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of management means a lot of man hours, which means we need to have funding for those positions. And that's another story. But, you know, we have a number of resources that have popped up, um, like the Kohala Center has been investing in hooing together um, the, a lot of charter schools on Big Island to create a purchasing co-op. And this is an initiative that they've been working with. We're looking at from the Department of Agriculture's perspective. So for my my program is um, getting more food in school, uh, local food in schools, yes, but that's only one mm. of the five goals that the legislature set out for my program. Um, and know that, that that will help facilitate a lot of these other things that we want to accomplish. But they've identified different goals and in, in, in that we have to be innovative, we have to think creatively, like you guys have been interviewing on your programs, which I love and watch oh, the LA yeah. plug. Every um, week, great. No, it's good stuff because there's a lot of good things going on out there and we don't always get to hear about it. Um, and so these popping up of, you know, creating cooperative purchasing agreements where people retain their autonomy to make their decisions on what they want to purchase, but then they go in and they get better buying power. How do they connect with the farmers instead of making it easy and buying the canned food? Um, and a lot of that stuff is actually free. It's like monopoly money because we get it as on the commodities through the USDA. So when we're right, right there. I mean, those kind of efficiencies where you're looking at you're just looking at your bottom line. Like, let's just take what's free. Is I think we've just want to like reprioritize that. And it yeah. it seems like we're doing good if all this effort, all these programs have led to the creation of your position mm -hmm. within the Department of Agriculture is yeah. great. I'm kind of interested of being a part of this national network. Where does Hawaii stand in terms of what is local food that is being incorporated, and maybe even the students' kind of reception to it. Mm -hmm. I think we've heard of federal programs right now that there's a big push to mm -hmm. incorporate healthy foods, not necessarily local, but what they've seen is that 
kids aren't eating it and so they're throwing it away. The waste is a huge thing. Um, the feds are actually pushing local as well, okay. which is great. Um, yeah. But implementing it's another thing. And I think Lighty Scott, if you'd like to take this one because you've had more on the You've had more slippers in the in the classroom experience <laughs> than I have on this. Well, yeah. what our Hui um, has seen, and our Hui is a network of networks. So there's five island level networks um, plus state agencies that participate, um, including Department of Health, Department of Education, Department of Agriculture, and UHC TAR. Um, so we we're, we're seeing a lot of success in building the educational component of Farm to School from the grassroots level. Um, we are having a little bit more of a challenge when it comes to the actual school food side of things because, as you can see, it takes a lot of expertise to even put the pieces together. Um, so we, in our interactions with the national network, um, just starting to see that other states have been hiring coordinators, um, seeing how effective those are, um, in being a voice for farm to school within the government. And we took that basically to the legislature and said, you know, at least 19 other states have already done this. Let's do that for Hawaii. And what I had seen um, being involved in farm to school in Hawaii for several years was that at the legislature, a lot of legislators were aware of farm to school mm -hmm. and they wanted something done. Yeah. Um, but oftentimes, as you were saying, they would try to implement some kind of mandate for the Department of Education to have certain percent of food procured locally. That approach wasn't necessarily um, being a successful one. So we came in and said, let's hire a coordinator and put a, you know, a person in this position that can put the pieces together and make progress. And that idea just really... Um, was one that was really well accepted. We held a legislative briefing in the beginning of the mm -hmm. session, which got people to understand kind of uh, what we're looking at and to get support for the bill. And uh, we were able to pass the bill. Um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> my position was born. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was amazing to see, mm -hmm. to see the power of, of folks. And they, you know, just like any measure at the legislature, it was an evolutionary process mm -hmm. and it took a lot of legwork. Um, but so much that we see in success, it is collaboration mm -hmm. and where, you know, you have to be respectful of everybody's roles. I mean, I couldn't do my job without the HUI doing their job. It is just me and Department of Ag um, on this and Chair Enright, um, mm -hmm. our current Department of Ag Chair, is sees this as a, a great opportunity, as does the governor and the lieutenant governor, in looking at our food systems. So when I have access to what all the other school um, island networks are doing um, through this group, then I can identify where things need to move from the state level and give them support what they need, but also a lot of it is um, Re respecting the work that they're already doing, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it would be it would be um, detrimental, I think, to just say this is the way we're going to do it across the state, no matter what. You know, we we can't really it, it doesn't work that way in Hawaii, and we have so many um, diverse uh, communities that have different things of different importance. So, for instance, I work with um, Kamehameha Schools um, sustainability coordinator as well. And we're talking about how to leverage the Native Hawaiian um, food component and um, with the education too, just how to grow native plants, which may or may not be edible. All these different things that are important to them versus a school on the leeward side or the windward side, you know, everything, that's the cultural respectful mm -hmm. um, component. But if we have a network that supports it and gives them resources, I think that's the critical point where we'll start moving forward. Like the P20 group that we're working with, you want to talk about that? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, maybe a year ago, our, our Hui um, was able to have conversation with Dean Maria Gallo at UHC TAR and, mm -hmm. and say, let's come together and look at the full spectrum of agriculture education in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Our Hui, you know, has people focusing on preschool, a lot of K through eight, some middle and high school, but they're just missing pieces. We wanted to yeah. bring more folks to the table. 
um, to have a coordinated framework of support for agriculture education in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, she was willing, and that was also a resolution that we put forward in the legislature in 2015 and was passed by the Senate. Um, so we, you know, Dean Gallo went ahead and started to convene this group um, with just many different stakeholders and it's an ongoing work. Yeah. But it has the potential to really push things forward as we, you know, make sure that it's all communicated and we're teaching, getting kids excited about things that they'll learn about, about things that they'll get trained in that will give them skills to be open for jobs and keep agricultural viable business in our state. Great. Yeah, so then we just kind of touched on right there what the, the future looks like of what those future goals are. So we're going to take a quick break and then just talk again a little more about what that vision is of what kind of success will look like and when all the pieces are in place. Awesome. Thanks. Aloha. I'm Kili'i Akina president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the, the basis of what's right and what's good and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. Every week we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. Yay. Welcome back. We're in our last segment for today's show. Um, I'm your co-host for the Hawaii Farmer Series, Justine Spiritu. My co-host is Matthew Johnson. But we've been doing less talking this time and more listening <laughs> to everything that's going on. You've um, already spoken too much. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll speak no more. <laughs> back to Robin. The Robin and Lighty Show. Please Hi. continue. Yay. So, you, so, we, so we were talking about kind of like the next steps, obviously, Robin, for your position with the State Department of Agriculture. It's a position that it's funded year by year by uh, the legislature. And then we want to hear from Lydie kind of like what is the Hui's transition and also hear a little bit about your transition as well. So, Robin, <laughs> why don't you go ahead and get us started? Okay. So, um, we'll, we'll see what happens with my position. Um, you know, it, it's a whole bunch of finagling on, on how our admin works, but I'm grateful that this position was actually up. You know, just to get a new position in the state is such a huge thing. Yeah. And it's really difficult in the Department of Agriculture where they have um, less than half a percent of our statewide budget, and they're dealing with some very critical issues like invasive species, and um, we have a number of things on our plate. So, so what to kind of leverage this position, Oh, sorry. Oh, so what kind of benchmarks or what would, uh, what kind of outcome for this year would mean that this position could continue or to so, kind of show the significance or? Yeah, significance. You know, that's always interesting because you look at what, what you have control of or what you, what you want for your goals. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, the goals, let me just shout out the okay. five goals for my um, statewide farm to school program is to one, improve student health. Two, develop an agricultural workforce that's educated. Three, enrich the local food system through support and increase of local food procurement at the public schools and other institutions. Four, accelerate garden and farm-based curriculum education for the state's public schools. And five, expand the relationships between public schools and ag communities. That's a very big list. I've been on the job for like two months. <laughs> And you've, you've um, already knocked off like three oh, or five. You know what? We've been busy. I've been really busy. Um, I've been freaking weekends really busy because there's so much going on. Yeah. And like I said before, you know, it's a network mm -hmm. of everything going on. I was on a webinar today from um, the National um, Farm to School program that was talking about benchmarks. Mm -hmm. And so I am in the process right now of laying out an asset map of farm to school assets going out there. We have so much good stuff going on in the state. Um, 
that first I wanted to identify what's out there and develop a framework for metrics. We want to get more local food in the schools. What does that look like? How yeah. much is in it now? Depending on the statistics that I was pulling, I mean, I can't really give you guys a good number mm -hmm. right now. So we're looking at ways to capture that information and move forward. Um, for me, what it looks like uh, is one, I, um, I work with the procuring departments, which are um, Department of Education, PSD, and the hospitals, um, and give them good procurement tools to use, good templates, good foundation for explaining how to do things and mm -hmm. what to do um, so they can use those in the future. Um, so it's one, procuring well. Um, so just for example, with, with that kind of tool, is that something you are creating or is that part of what this network is about? Is creating what that tool could look like and then you are like the That's liaison. procurement law, yeah. Oh, okay. um, and, and there are people working on it. Are, um, there are people working on it, but that's very procurement related. Um, two, the other side of it is how to connect what we're identifying our need is in our solicitations with the vendors. So we have farmers who are like, I want to I wanna grow for schools. And um, we're like, yes, Department right. of Ag says, yes, we want you to grow. Yeah. If you want to grow, we want you to grow. Um, but identifying what that will take to contract with the state, what mm -hmm. it takes to be a vendor, and doing some outreach. So I've got some outreach things planned. Um, and working with the distributors because, like I mentioned before, um, the DOE has no storage facility. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it's just too expensive for them to drive just a small amount of food out and make a drop. You know, Matt, as a distributor, mm -hmm. <laughs> how much is it going to cost me to make that run? How can I call them together? But how can we also look at them island by island mm -hmm. to make sure that we're focusing on local food and get the educational component in it? Um, the other thing that will look better for me is um, when we change our cakey's relationship with their food, how they see it, mm -hmm. if they're going to eat the tomato, um, and work with schools to clarify, you know, the health codes of what they can serve and what they can't serve and how to serve it or how to get it into the community because mm -hmm. there's always loopholes to get through things. Oh, we um, like loopholes. We like, I like loopholes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I like loopholes because um, they teach us where, where we can move, and if it works, then how to move forward. I think a lot of it's going to be um, trial and error. It's going to be um, innovative ideas and testing them out. Luckily, we have the support of, of a group of people. We're, gonna, we're working on a pilot project with Lieutenant Governor right now on different procurement method that has not been done in our state before. Awesome. Um, so it's early to say exactly what that'll look like. I'm just starting to develop it, but I took, um, there's, there's a great um, evaluation toolkit mm. that is made available through the National um, Farm to School Network and the USDA. So I'm excited to be able to have these tools, to be able to have these resources. I don't need to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. The wheel's rolling. I just need to make <laughs> sure like we give it a fairly clear path so it doesn't do one of those. <laughs> 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 you know? Well, yeah. so you've got your work cut out for you. You're really busy. <laughs> I'm busy. And I'm curious, since this is uh, the, the Kakua Foundation, the Aina in Schools program started, you said, in 2000. The Aina in Schools program, I believe it was 2008. 2008, okay. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. been a little bit of time where you kind of started this education component. Mm -hmm. And can you kind of speak at all on um, what that's looked like for the students, if that kind of integration? Because it's also a, a multi-year program. Yes. Um, so. It's just wonderful to see the evolution, as you're saying. But uh, just independently on each different island, these school garden programs started to sprout um, about a decade ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Hawaii Island has really been a leader for having strong network that um, has, you know, actually at one point had two coordinators reaching out to schools to provide supplies, mini grants, professional development. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what each of the island networks actually does, is just network with schools, make sure that they know they're supported. Mm -hmm. um, it's a job that we would eventually like the Hawaii Department of Education to take part in, as the Department of Agriculture is now. And it's actually something we are working towards. So as the Hui coordinator, I was also able to develop a relationship with the Hawaii Department of Ed Education Superintendent's Office and Office of Curriculum. Um, so 
that's kind of the next step for the hui. There's a lot of work and attention going toward school food procurement, mm -hmm. and that's wonderful. Um, the hui is often kind of the only one at the table saying, let's make sure this education piece you know, also is um, supported. So we are developing this relationship and partnership with the Hawaii Department of Education at the administrative levels to say, you know, how can we collaborate to provide training curriculum that uses school gardens as a teaching tool for science education, for health education, and any other subject that you could possibly think of. Yeah. Um, what's wonderful is that we're supported by a lot of research um, that the National Network has brought together. Even the CDC, you know, came out with a report that said healthy children learn better. You know, it, it mm -hmm. seems obvious um, to a lot of us, but just a lot of awareness around health and how mm -hmm. that relates to academic, academic achievement. Um, so it's which, which Robin showed in her um, <laughs> oh, yeah. poster well, board there. Well, we yeah. have the um, we have the the radioactive danger sign. <laughs> yeah. It gets pretty gruesome, and and related to health and how it's grown and understanding what to put in my body makes a difference. It really does make a difference. <laughs> yeah. So um, getting kids out in the garden, you know, would like to see that just uh, at every level. And it is something that doesn't need to be extra. We'd like to think Just that be integrated. It, it can be integrated. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's such yeah. an amazing learning tool. What does Nancy always say? No child left inside. Mm. Nancy Redfeather, who's another person we wish was able to come on the show with us today. Yeah. But um, there's so many people. I mean, if I... If I just went down the list of just my partners on this program, implementing it from the state's perspective, I think we would run out of time. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's DOE, there's um, Department of Health, um, th there's nonprofits, um, there's KCC working on um, culinary side of it, there's Maui College, there's good stuff going on. It's, it'll be interesting to see how it all fits together. So that kind of concludes what time we have. Obviously, there's so we much to talk about. <laughs> Give us more but, time. Um, why don't we just say one kind of thing of a, a vision of what kind of success, what we're going towards All right. that um, in, in 60 thank seconds Thank you for each. that. So <laughs> we are here in Hawaii. We live in Hawaii. We need to look to what has sustained people here on these islands for centuries and millennia. And I'm talking about the foods that are so critical to um, who we are as people and also the land. Because certain plants meant, are meant to grow here mm -hmm. and others struggle <laughs> and require you know, support in the way of fer fertilizers and pesticides. Um, when it comes to things like taro, sweet potato, breadfruit, I'd like to see those in every school garden and on every school meal plate. Mm -hmm. Just being that the school system kind of in tune with that. Yes. Five seconds of what your vision and dream is. <laughs> um, five Three, seconds, sorry. Two, uh, <laughs> that w we eat healthy food and that our farmers are able to get a decent price for it so we can keep farmers farming. Like Great. It. Awesome. Well, you guys are a, a big part of that. So thanks for coming on and kind yeah, of sharing you so uh, your story and kind of where we're at. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Uh, join us next Thursday. Thank you. Great, right, thank you. Thank you. You two are like an awesome balance, like you guys like the energy and what you're working on.
Hi everybody, I'm I.C. Davidson. Thanks for watching Think Tech Hawaii. One of the things that we try to do here is promote civic engagement. How do we do that? We put on shows weekdays from 12 to 5 p.m. Um, we let people in in our world on Facebook and all the social media. Today I'd like to talk to you about another way that you can engage us here at Think Tech Hawaii and help us promote civic engagement here in Hawaii. Um, what you do is you get on Twitter, you follow us at Think Tech HI, and during the day, between weekday, weekdays between 12 and 5 p.m., you can interact with our live shows. What does that mean? You can ask questions, comments, thoughts, experiences, anything. All you have to do is mention us on Twitter. We'll see it here in the studio, and our hosts and guests will address them accordingly. This is a, a big thing for us. We want to hear from you. The conversation doesn't start here when our show ends. It ends when everybody gets their say. Join us weekdays, 12 to 5 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. Join in the conversations live with Twitter, at ThinkTechHI. Thank you for watching. We appreciate your support. See you soon.